I got into the aviation industry back in about 1988 with, as my dad was a pilot and uh, he gave me for my 16th birthday, he said, you can, I'll let you get your pilot's license. So that's where I started. And then fast forward a little bit, I, got, I went uh, because I knew I wanted to be in the aviation industry as a career. So I went to, um, I, I went to the Marine Corps basically did uh, the flight training program there and then after the flight training program picked up helicopters and then in, in the military for 22 years 20 of them flying 53 echoes and then retired after 22 years and then went to um, went to Bell came to Bell and was here as an instructor for almost four years I'm not thinking I was ever going to leave Bell I was offered the job, I took it, and, and now I've been doing it for almost a year now, and I've enjoyed every bit of it. Aeronautical Accessories went to um, the HAI. I had some friends of mine that were there, and they called me from HAI and were explaining to me the system that was that would just got approved that week for the uh, for the retrofit upgrade. And I went back right after that, and I started talking to Boyton about that, and. Uh, and his comment was, let's get that, let's make that happen. Because of the incident and the visibility of that, and I'm flying for a high visibility guy, I wanted to make sure that we, we basically were covering not just an upgrade. I wanted to do um, an aeronautical accessories upgrade and a Piney Flats maintenance evolution follow with an annual. So I did a lot more than just a retrofit kit at Bell Piney Flats. And I, and I wanted to go there, uh, one, because I worked at Bell for a number of years and I knew the reputation, I knew the guys, some of the guys that were working there. And secondly, because I knew that they, they stand behind their work. Um, and my concern is you do that kind of, that much heavy duty maintenance on a helicopter. If I have an issue, and I still talk to them to this day, if I have any issue with them, they'll call me. I've had an issue at nine o'clock at night and I picked up the phone and I called my lead avionics technician that was running this thing. And I was like, oh, he's not going to answer the phone. And he does. And he answers the phone and he gets back to me. And uh, believe it or not, that day he actually told me what my issue was and I was able to fix it because he was on the phone with me. So that's the kind of thing that I enjoyed and I trust the products that come out of the people that work at Bell. So whether it's aeronautical accessories, because I know all of them now, and Bell Piney Flats. Now that we're done talking about this, let's go out and fly it. All right, here we go. All you have to do is make sure it's in the green when it starts. So as long as it stays in there, it can flick. It can go into the yellow a little bit, which is no big deal. It kind of will flicker in there. This one's actually a nice, cool start today. All right, fifty percent. The starter will go off, and then sixty the auto relight. There she goes. All right, start's done. 63, close enough. Generator comes on. That's him calling. See, that's the that's the traffic call. There it is on the traffic meter. That's pretty nice. Yeah, we're going to go down south. Uh, we'll just remain clear of you, uh, and then we'll come back in when we're done. Again, th that's one of the functions that, that when we were talking with Blake, he wanted more capability on that. So it gives you the color and all that. If, if I wanted to shoot an approach into an airport, all you have to do is say we're going to go direct to, let's just pick the lines where we're. I mean, already been recent, so there's the AK. It's been my recent AFW, enter. Enter. And then, say I wanted to go down there, see it's already telling me to turn, right? Which way, I don't have it set to where if I did tell it, it would turn for me. And then I can just go here to procedures, and I can select approach, and say the wind's right of the south today. So I would pick a, let's call it a, a RNAV or ILS, and I go enter. And I can do vectors or initial, enter. And turn your bar, whatever your lower altitude is, but we can skip that. And then I can just say, oh, that's what's going to go, and you activate it. Enter. 
I, I can show you a, a, an example of a synthetic vision hit. So if we're coming down, and you'll see it come up on the screen. So you'll see synthetic vision pop here in a second. There's synthetic vision. And it says train. So that's synthetic vision. That gives you train of awareness. And it's saying, hey, you're going to run into the ground right here if you keep going. So you'll see the tower on the screen now. And this is what's nice at night. So if you're flying at night and say it isn't lit up and the lights are out. It, see, there's the obstacle. Gotcha. Okay. And then as we get closer to it, we'll turn. And then as we get closer, it'll, and we don't have to go right to it, even if we're close. Let's do it here. And it's still caution, but now it's going to turn. There it is. And that right there is good for nighttime flying. You're going to get caught at some point because we fly around in weather like this. And then all of a sudden, at nighttime, you can't see it. And you'll be fine. And it'll, it'll, the weather will tell you in reporting at the air, at the airfields that the weather is fine. But then you go between airfields and you may run into crap where you can't see. Well, so I flew in. I was It was 700 feet at one airport. It was 500 at the next. And in between the two, and they were like 45 miles apart, in between the two, I was coming down and down. And next thing I was like 300 feet. Yeah, I could have turned around. Um, but I needed to get to the next airport, and I was like, and I don't, and it was dark, so I, I was like, if I could run back into it that way, and I'm down too low, and it's nighttime, and you know, out here, people could put antennas up to 200 feet and not even know it. So I actually set up an approach, and then um, I climbed, went to the initial approach fix, and the aircraft shot the approach for me, and brought me down to the airport I was going to. I'm, I'm pretty comfortable in the in the daytime, but at nighttime, when you can't see anything. Uh, the, the the capability of this system is is, is huge. You, I mean, I can't even I can't even explain how important it is to me that I have this now. It makes it makes my stress level so much lower now that I have all this this in, in an aircraft. Something that even a, a little Garmin, um, you know, the the five thirty, uh, just just wasn't going to give me. And, and, and with even with an autopilot set up, you know, th this system it gives me the SA that us helicopter pilots generally don't have, don't get. This is just so user friendly. If you talk to anybody that flies a 407 or a G, uh, the G1000 system, this is a probably one of the most user friendly systems that doesn't take much to figure it out. Um, you can do it while you're flying uh, and, and learn it. And you know, the, the the hardest thing is, and that's not really hard, I should say, but this is something that's new. I know a lot of folks that have been flying Garmin or been flying Bells. And I, I try to explain this to him. I go, this right here, this PSI system that that came out with the with the GX, it, it's it's changed the way. And I say us military old military guys grew up of you had to learn all the limitations. You had to know the numbers. Well, this one kind of takes that away and it puts it in perspective of hey, if it's green, it's good. If it's yellow, it's good for a little bit. And if it's red, it's not it's not good. You need to do something about that. So you fly around and you're all green like this, you're good. Just need to know that right now that my torque is my highest limitation at 70%, and I'm in the green, so I'm good. My MGT temperature is 635. I'm in the green. My MG is good. All my temperatures of my engine and my transmission are all good, temperatures and pressures. If they go down low and they change colors on me, then i got to deal with it appropriately. So the, the neat thing on, uh, on this is when you're on, you get weather on this page, you get, you'll get you get the weather. So if there's a storm out there, you'll see it here. This is a bit the, uh, the page that I fly off. This is a sectional, which is awesome. That's what the G1000H does not have, is the sectional in there. So it's a, and it also has hel helicopter charts. So if I want to fly off the helicopter chart, I can do that too. It's got IFR low charts, IFR high charts. So you can do, got everything like an IFR certified aircraft. So it's got your helicopter routes, everything yeah. for the different cities. Okay. Yep. So it's really nice. There's your traffic map. You also got it over here. So a lot of times it'll be up on this one and when I'm not using it over here. And then you can zoom it in and out of here. You can see it there. So that's the traffic page. So you got traffic, weather, HTAWS, IFR, VFR charts, and then nav. That's the typical Garmin map that's on the G1000H. This is your, your AUX page. And up right here, your AUX page, most important page on a Garmin G1000. It's got pretty much everything, um, trip planning, tells you like 
what my density altitude is and all that. We, you know, I fly a lot of VIPs around, and they and they see this stuff, and they go, "This thing is amazing." And I, you know, when you tell them it's you know it's an 11 year old aircraft, they go, "Wow, it doesn't look like it." <laughs> <laughs>